Approximately a week ago Samsung announced two phones the Galaxy S10 Lite and the Galaxy Note 10 Lite and never in my life has it taken me this long to wrap my head around a couple of smartphones my first reaction was oh cool new flagship phones but then this quickly turned to confusion as I looked at their frankly bizarre choice of specifications after delving even further though it's all starting to fall into place in a weird way these devices might just be one of Samsung's smartest decisions ever so first up the Galaxy S10 Lite your first impression will probably be similar to mine a fantastic 1080p Super AMOLED display on the front especially when you switch to the color mode from natural to vivid you've got great software powered by Samsung's latest One UI to skin running on top of Android 10 which brings all number of small refinements over last year's offering and I'd even go as far to say a really good camera it takes photos with great dynamic range in most cases indistinguishable from the most expensive of Samsung phones there's also an ultra wide and a macro camera for super close up shots a bit of an unusual combination but I'm fine however the more I use it the more questions I started to have it's an S series phone a title Samsung has always reserved for any of their top level flagships so why call it that when they've skipped the pure glass construction used for every other S series phone in years in exchange for what feels like plastic in the hand it's strikingly similar to one of their mid-range series phones and the timing of the whole thing the phone is equipped with last year's Snapdragon 855 chipset it branded as one of last year's phones so why on earth did they wait a whole year before releasing it there's nothing inherently wrong with this 855 chip by the way but with the pace of the current smartphone market by waiting a year this previously flagship processor is now available in mid-range phones plus the S10 Lite and the Note 10 Lite which I'll get to because that is even weirder they launched at the end of this January that's barely two weeks before the company's next-gen flagship scum and the whole thing is head-scratching leaked confusing so armed with what felt like a hundred questions I went to go and meet with the chief engineer behind the two phones and I think I can finally explain what's happening here on a bit of a side note if you are enjoying this video a sub would be amazing somewhere Samsung's current budget phones let's take the Galaxy A10 in the UK they sit at around 100 pounds their mid-range phones like the new Galaxy O. 51 sit at just over 300 pounds but their upcoming flagships will probably start in all less than 700 pounds so that means even though we've already split phones into budget mid-range and top tier because of the sheer range and prices now we almost need another category the high but not top end and that's exactly what the S10 Lite has meant to target at around 580 pounds. It's a phone with compromises compared to the mainline Galaxy S10 but also a surprising amount of benefits and that's what separates it from one of their mid-range phones in most cases a mid-range phone basically starts with a flagship and then makes a whole load of things less good but this feels like it was built from the ground up to just be different it's not actually plastic for starters it's a compound they call glass stick created by fusing glass and plastic together which gives it the drop resistance of plastic and let's be honest the feel of plastic but with the potential silver lining of slightly better scratch resistance a property of glass glass and this 48 megapixel camera on and in a way the best camera Samsung has ever put on a smartphone it comes with a completely redesigned stabilization system that means video has come out almost cinematic even though I'm walking here without being particularly careful and low light to where Samsung's video has historically fallen apart the S10 Lite manages to control bright spots and minimize grain in situations like this it is better than the camera on the 2000 pound Galaxy Fold for photos and general versatility I wouldn't say it's quite there but the point is that this is not a worse camera it's different you might remember a phone called the Galaxy S10 II that was launched alongside the Galaxy S10 literally just as a cheaper alternative but whilst in terms of name the S10 Lite sounds similar its purpose is actually very different it feels a lot like this was made for the younger generation people who want a big screen to view content and a great video camera to capture it people who are a bit more budget constrained and who don't care as much about things like a headphone jack because they've grown up in a world of wireless the s10 lights problem is not at all that it's a bad phone and feels reliable and p and the addition of a 4 
500 mAh battery is an absolutely amazing move by Samsung it's just that it feels a bit misclassified it's so different to the other Galaxy S phones that my first impression was that I should have had an entirely new name altogether maybe the Galaxy H11H would be this new category of high but not top end phones and the 11 would match with the upcoming Galaxy S11 series but I have a theory about why they've named them the way they have which I'll get to now that leaves us with the other piece of the puzzle the Note 10 Lite iPhone launched alongside the S10 Lite is a sort of dynamic duo but the odd thing is that they have such little in common for the first time in history the Note phone is expected to be cheaper than the S phone I've been told to expect around a 530 part price compared to 580 the Note has a headphone jack when the S10 Lite doesn't the Note has only 25 watt fast charging while the S10 Lite has 45 watts super fast charging the Note has a much smaller hole punch at the top even though both phones have basically the same front camera but it gets even weirder the good is that it's got an equally impressive 6.7 inch 1080p old display and it shares the massive 4 500 million power battery dash but bizarrely the phone has a completely different camera set up to the S10 Lite for two phones launched at the same time with a similar price it just begs the question why you're looking at a 12 megapixel main sensor instead of 48 and the macro camera has been swapped for a more conventional 2x telephoto but the strangest part here is the choice of chipset whilst we've heard the year old Snapdragon 855 chip on the S10 Lite the Note 10 Lite chips with the two-year-old's nose 9810 that's the same chip we saw on the Galaxy S9 just weeks before the Galaxy S11 comes out it's not a bad chip it'll hold its own versus mid-range processors in 2020 it's just by the time you've used this phone for even a year it's a little alarming that the hardware inside will be three years old so again putting on my detective guys the differences with the S10 Lite I think boil down to this with both of these phones Samsung was not thinking okay Okay we've got the S10 Plus. Aunt, the new temple is how can we downgrade them to fit a much lower price tag they were thinking about two very different types of consumers they want to target so compared to the S10 Lite for younger generations the Note feels like their enterprise solution the phone for more mature business users video quality isn't as good but if you think about it that's less important for these kinds of consumers and the photo quality is flagship level it's got a headphone jack as the older demographic may be less familiar with wireless and of course being a note phone you did get Samsung's S Pen in all its glory which is a business tool in itself it feels just as good here as it is on their more expensive offerings and it comes with the whole suite of S Pen features and the reason that hole punch is smaller on the note is actually because both phones use different display technologies they look the same but the S10 lights is actually much slimmer and lighter but that's why it needs this extra padding around the front camera and now in the same way that the S10 light feels a little bit misclassified so does this note this plastic construction combined with the weaker chip doesn't do the galaxy note brand a whole lot of justice but i think i know why they've done it samsung's mid-range phones sell incredibly well and both the s10 light and number 10 light feel like bridge products in the end but samsung really wants is for people to buy their top end phones and so by creating an in-between like this using the names of those flagships they're getting people who might have previously stuck to buying mid-range a series phones used to the idea of buying a flagship with their hope that next time they buy a phone they'll go all the way and spend $1,000 or even more neither supports wireless charging or has an IP rating but I gotta say I walked away in the end impressed even with all the strange decisions and the confusing naming going on here both phones offer a good experience providing you fall into one of the two groups of people they're targeted at if you enjoyed this video then do check out my analysis of the equally unusual Lana Plus concept one smartphone I'll link it from here now please if you enjoy this video subscribe for new update